Welcome back. Today and always, I'm your guide into the business world, Sergey Patrick Heath at BizBaby. In a previous chapter, we discussed how to, plan, how to plan and budget for this new exciting venture. If you haven't already watched it, I suggest you do it before watching this one. In this chapter, we will go through the exact steps of doing it properly, from forming a corporation to how to run your own finances. There's going to be a lot of great information and I'm confident next 10 minutes will be worth watching for almost anyone who plans on starting a business. I wish I had someone give me this video to watch 13 years ago when I was just starting. You would have saved me a lot of stress and money. Let's not wait any longer and get straight into it. Glad you're still here. Here are the steps we will cover in details below. You must do them regardless of the business you are starting. Disclaimer, please note I'm not your attorney and can't give you any legal advice on how to start a business. Before you do any of these steps listed here, I always suggest getting a legal advice from a licensed professional. Nevertheless, steps are number one, forming a business entity, two, applying for EAN and EFTPS, 3. Opening a bank account 4. Getting a business insurance 5. Renting a um, business space and office 6. Unemployment insurance 7. Workers' compensation 8. Getting sales tax ID 9. Business license 10. Finding a bookkeeper and an accountant 11. Finding a payroll provider and 12. Separating business and personal this is the least exciting part of opening a business, but each and every step above is extremely important and should be done with care. Number one, forming a business entity. In chapter three, we discuss different business structures. So let's assume that you already know what business formation you want to file. Now you need to make a decision on which state you would like to file your company in. That's right. You can open a company in Delaware, which I recommend doing and doing business in a different state. However, you will also need to file a foreign company authorization application to be able to do business in that state. You may also want to use a registered agent in Delaware and in your state. Register agent will represent your company in that state on your behalf. Be a handler of all your correspondence, so sort of a middleman, while keeping your personal information private, hidden from public. That creates a legal barrier between you and a company. When you're forming a company, you need to decide who will be the owner as well as the acting director, secretary, and a treasurer. It's not uncommon for a small business owner to be all four. You wear many hats and it's normal for people assigned under those positions to change as company grows. If you use registered agent service, that information will be hidden from a public eye. You will also need to decide how many shares your company will have. As a first business, having about 2,000 shares as no par value shares is, prefer is preferred. It means shares have no dedicated minimum value, otherwise you will need to list a price per share, for example, one cent each. When onboarding a business partner, it will be relatively easy to do so by selling a specific amount of shares at a specific price. Selling all the shares means selling all of your business, so be careful agreeing to sh sell shares to anyone. Remember how many shares you had issued when you formed your company. That is usually listed in your articles of incorporation. Selecting a company name is an extremely important task that requires some research and sometimes needs redoing. So you will need to make sure your company name is absolutely unique in your original filing state. All additional states and IRS. There can be no company with the same or close worded name. It happened to me many times when Delaware rejected an application and after changing the name and getting incorporated in Delaware successfully, we filed an application with IRS for EIN and that was rejected. So Delaware company name had to be amended for something more unique and refiled with IRS and then being rejected in New York state because <laughs> New York already had a similar company name. Good news that only original state and IRS names have to match exactly each additional state application 
can have a different name to be represented in that state. So, for example, your company name could be Bob's Toys Inc. in Delaware, then Bob's Kid Entertainment in Washington State, and then Bob's Games and Toys in New York. However, you must use the same EIN number when filing foreign state application for authority. We recommend forming a business online with one of the companies such as Incorporate.com. They will make the process easy and seamless. In two, three days after submitting your order, you will have a company formed in the first state. Forming a company in Delaware would cost around six to eight hundred dollars with registered agent. Certificate of incorporation will arrive in mail within a week after forming a company online. Number two, applying for EIN in EFTPS. Every company that was formed in the US needs to have an EIN, even if you are not planning to have employees. It's done through the form SS4 and it takes about three to five business days once an application is submitted. You will receive a certificate confirmation letter from an IRS in a mail with nine letter number. With EIN, you should receive a separate letter from EFTPS PIN code with EFTPS PIN code to process payments for payroll tax. You must keep those letters in a safe place. Make copies just in case because recovering that information will be extremely challenging. Number three, opening a bank account. Once you receive certificate of incorporation and IRS letters, make sure the company name is spelled the same way on both documents. Congratulations. You can now open a bank account. It's important to open one now and not later, so you can start separating personal and business expenses. Deposit some money and order business checks. Those will come handy very soon. While you're at it, make sure you can log in into online banking, set up Zelle, and get your debit card and mail. Number four, getting a business insurance. Though this step can be done much later, most retail spaces or office space buildings require a renter to have business insurance that will cover you, your business, your customers, and the landlord in case of damage or accident happening. It's good to obtain at least liability insurance that will protect you against basic liabilities. Those could cost about three to five hundred dollars depending on business use and level of coverage. Comprehensive business insurance though can protect you from business interruption and even loss of revenue but those go for much more much more money some clients will require you to provide proof of business insurance at least liability before hiring you for example a home cleaning company may be required to provide a business insurance before building letting them in to clean any of the tenants apartments number five renting a business space or office for many businesses, this will be the most important step on a business journey. Having a perfectly tailored location or well-set office could be a life or death kind of decision. Craigslist is still one of the main platforms to find commercial rent and spaces. However, there are other websites such as LoopNet have some very good offerings as well. To get into the details of getting your own space, watch the net next chapter 6. Number six, unemployment insurance. If you're going to employ even one person, you need to obtain unemployment insurance. It covers unemployment benefits for if or when they are let go. Usually it's done through an online state portal and process takes a few weeks to get approval. Math usually works as following. For every $1 as you pay salary to your worker, you will be required to pay five cents to the state. This well, uh, this was a rate in New York um, about 2019, but it's different in every state. There are very heavy fees for penalty if you're not paying unemployment insurance. UI goes up each year when your employees are fired. Unemployment insurance will be covered in a chapter 24. Number seven, workers' compensation insurance. Most states require businesses to obtain workers' compensation insurance it will cover your employee in case of a worker medical injury. You can choose a company to service you with a worker's comp. That is usually done through a business insurance broker. You will need to provide an approximate annual payroll and a number of workers you employ, as well as a description of their work duties. For example, an office receptionist will be much cheaper to insure compared to, for example, a construction worker. 
due to the environmental hazards and uh, danger of trade. You will be required once in a while to go through an audit to make sure you have the accurate coverage. On top of workers' compensation insurance, yes, yes, I know there's more. There will also be a disability insurance too. Number eight, getting sales tax. If you are selling a product or providing a service, you may be required to pay state sales tax. Sales tax ID, sales tax ID is usually obtained through a state government website. This is very different from EIN. EIN is an employment identification number. It's a federal registration number to pay taxes. Tax ID is a state identification for your business to report sales portion of the tax. Number nine, business license. Most U.S. cities require some form of business license for most businesses. In New York, it's called DCA license, Department of Consumer Affairs. It's mandatory for a majority of consumer-facing businesses. As a foreign company that was registered in Delaware, you may not be aware of these requirements. So I suggest you look into your state uh, for business license requirements. Number nine. Or 10. Number 10, yes. Finding a bookkeeper and an accountant. Separating business and personal expenses is extremely important for tax reporting. It allows you to avoid extremely costly audits from IRS. You should always use your business debit or better credit card for business purchases. Avoid using merchant account to make purchases at all costs, since those expenses don't end up showing on your business checking account and can be hard to prove later. When all banking is done properly, hiring an accountant and filing taxes can be a breeze. Usually an accountant works in a team with a bookkeeper and takes care of all your financial reporting and taxes. Bookkeeper gets a viewing permission on your online banking to see all the transaction transactions that you see in monthly reports. And those reports can be used to file taxes accordingly and timely. He can warn you when you're overspending or missing a reporting state, city, or federal deadline. Number 11. Finding a payroll provider. Finding a proper, convenient way of doing your payroll could make your life much, much easier when it comes to all nitty-gritty payroll and taxation part. There are a few ways to do it. You can either pay payroll directly from your company, for example, uh, through Intuit, payroll that allows you to calculate and issue virtual checks that you can then print on a regular printer and simply hand it over to your employee right there and then. However, you are responsible for timely filing taxes and making sure you save enough for taxes part each month or quarter. ADP, for example, allows you to process payrolls through indirectly. ADP charges you weekly fee and issues checks from the company from their company to your employees. They also collect all the taxes and do all the reporting for you automatically. You don't have to do a thing. However, that could be expensive. I recommend Intuit for smaller companies and ADP for companies with more complex employee structure and with 10 employees or more. Number 12, separating personal and business. I wanted to list this as a separate step. I can't stress enough how important it is to separate your personal income and expenses from your business. As a new business, you will be required to give your business constant financial help. That doesn't mean you will just use your personal money from your personal bank account. Absolutely not. Each time you need to cover some expenses with your own money, you need to deposit that into your business checking account first, then write a business check or use a business credit card to pay for it. Try opening a business credit card uh, as soon as six months of having a business checking account. Once you obtain it, try only using credit card for payments that require swiping or entering the card number to pay. Never use or expose your debit card in any situation. Debit cards have much lower protection against fraud or theft, and it has no limit to spend on it. Try to never withdraw any cash from your account. If you pay someone, write them a check. It will allow you to avoid further tax confusion for accounting purposes. Cash is extremely hard to deduct as an expense on your tax return. At the end of each quarter, you must create a report of how much you have deposited from your personal account and create a loan agreement that lists all the money borrowed by a business, at what interest rate, and how long will it be repaid until you are done. 
until uh, later on, you will want to take that money back and you do not want it to be taxed on a business or personal level. This will allow you to keep clear books for tax reporting. Let's summarize everything we covered in this chapter. We've covered forming a business entity, applying for EAN and EFTPS, sorry, this very long name, <laughs> opening a bank account, getting a business insurance, renting a business space and office, doing, getting unemployment insurance and then workers' compensation insurance, getting a sex, uh, <laughs> tax ID, business license, finding a bookkeeper and an accountant, finding a payroll provider, and separating personal and business expenses. Congratulations, now you have learned the exact steps on starting your own biz baby. Thank you.